What's going on, everybody? Thanks for listening to iOS Dev Discussions. Got another episode of what I'm working on for you. This is the show where I, you know, as the name says, talk about what I work on uh, as a content creator, indie developer, that sort of stuff, right? I call it the three C's, content creation business, uh, consulting, and creator view. So we dive into each one. Uh, the big question on this episode is, am I getting a job? We'll dive into that in a second. I do want to mention for those that are just listening on the podcast, because this has been a just a podcast only show, I'm filming it for the first time. I'm giving this a, a try, a little bit of an experiment. I'll probably do this for a couple episodes, see how it goes, see how it's received, and then you know make the decision from there. But uh, if you are on YouTube and this is your first time ever hearing about this show and you wanna go back to the previous episodes because I do just kind of build on what I'm talking about in this podcast, uh, you can go back and listen to the older episodes. They're only like a half hour each, so a pretty quick uh, listen to get caught up on like what I've been doing the past year. If you're even interested or if you just wanna pick up from right here, that's cool too. Okay, so Am I getting a job, I think is the, the, the question here. Uh, so I put up this tweet for the context, many, uh, in case you didn't see uh, this tweet. And really what it boils down to, and I think probably a lot of people can relate uh, when it comes to like this pandemic and stuff is, you know, working on this YouTube channel, doing my own thing. You know, I, I work in this apartment by myself all day, every day. I'm not on a team, so I'm not on calls. It gets pretty boring and kind of lonely, and to be honest, and after like, a while of doing that, I started thinking like, man, I, I really wish I could work on a team, you know, and be being part of something and help build something. So that started to become like very, very attractive. So I put out that tweet just to like see what was out there, right? I'm not like hardcore on the job hunt. I'm not out there scouring job boards and sending applications. I'm just put out a tweet and we'll see what happens. And the main thing I'm looking for in this job if, is uh, working on an app at scale on a larger team. If you've followed my career on this YouTube channel, you know I've pretty much specialized in that early stage startup, right? You go from brand new project to 1.0, right? That launch, building the first you know, iteration of it, iterating on it rapidly as we get the first you know, few customers. You know, that area, I feel very confident in. Like I feel like I'd be great on any early stage startup. I'd be great on that team. However, what I have no experience in is working on a very large app at scale that has like a, you know, a large iOS team and, you know, millions of users because let's be real, those are completely different worlds. And I believe they, they require just completely different skill sets as well. So I'm only going to get a job if a good opportunity comes up on a large team that has scale. And I'm in a very fortunate position. Again, like I don't, I don't need a job. If you listen to a couple episodes ago where I talked about how business went in the year 2020, I do fine, you, you know. So I'm only gonna take a job if it's like a really great situation, right? Like again, I'm not just gonna take any random job because I got a pretty good thing going here. Uh, however, on that like good thing going, I can't really take advantage of all the perks that like come along with this, right? So like working for yourself, doing your own thing, running your own business, I have all the freedom in the world. I get to wake up, work on what I wanna work on, when I wanna work on it. If I wanna take a month off, I'll take a month off. Like it's just, that freedom is amazing. However, in quarantine, in pandemic times where you can't travel, I can't go meet people and do stuff, like all those perks are kind of useless, right? So that's why I think this is like a great time to hop on a team, again, if the right situation presents itself uh, and get that experience, you know, at that larger team at scale because I feel that's just like a giant, like, you know, hole in my game. So what am I looking for? Uh, well, the project has to be something I'm interested in, I like, and I think that should probably go hand in hand with any job. But, you know, an example, I'm, I'm really into finance. You know, if you, if you heard my story, my degrees are in finance and economics. The whole reason I moved to San Francisco before I became a developer was to get involved in like angel, uh, angel investing, venture capital, like that whole world. Becoming a developer was just like a, a happy little accident <laughs> that happened. Uh, so investing's always been like, you know, uh, very interesting to me. So there's a couple of finance companies uh, I'm looking at. So that checks that box of like, you know, something I'm interested in. Uh, also looking for like a, a great team. And by that, I mean like people more senior than me that, you know, have been around for a while that I, I can still learn from. I've said this time and time again, I consider myself an average developer, right? For somebody with six years experience, I'm perfectly average with somebody with that experience level. I have nothing special. I don't think I'm bad. Just, just mediocre, just average for, for that experience level. What I think makes me a, a great developer, a great addition to the team is all the soft skills. You know, I did a whole video on this called I'm an average developer, so I'll give the cliff notes. But basically I believe, you know, the communication skills, uh, teamwork, attitude, just passion for the job, like that kind of stuff, all the soft skills, uh, you know, that make somebody a good person to work with, 
I think I excel at those, even though like my developer skills are just like mediocre. So that's why I'm looking for a team that has a lot of experience so I can up that technical skill, right? And get experience in that whole world of, of you know, again, a large app at scale. So you may be wondering like who I'm interviewing with, who I'm talking to. I'm gonna keep that under wraps for now. Uh, you'll probably have to wait till like next episode. Uh, when it's all said and done, whether I get a job or not, you know, I'll talk about it. Not like what questions were asked, I'm not gonna do that, but I'll talk about like what companies I was talking to, why I did or didn't, you know, take that job, that kind of stuff. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna keep it a little vague because again, I am still early in the process. Uh, I've had a lot of like exploratory phone calls, um, you know, and lining up like the first stage, like the official interview. So we're still, early in the process. But I'll throw you a little bit of a bone. There are some fang companies. There are, you know, again, finance and kind of like everything in between. I'm, after the, like the exploratory phone calls or DMs back and forth, I've kind of narrowed it down to a small handful. Again, I'm being picky. Like this has to be, for me to give up like the good situation I have, it's gotta be a great situation. So yeah, and, and during these exploratory phone calls, something has surprised me. Um, so even of the small, you know, handful of companies that I'm like considering, uh, there's remote work is an issue for some of them. So even that small handful might even get narrowed down to one or two, you know, and I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent against moving and relocating. However, I just moved to this new city. Like I don't, I don't want to move again, but you know, for the right situation, like I, I would, uh, however, it, it would have to be like absolutely perfect. So I, I guess where I'm going with this is I put the odds on like, if I end up getting a job or not, probably 60, 40 towards not getting a job only because remote may be an issue. And I don't know if I really want to do that. Uh, and again, I'm already limiting it down to like a, a small number of companies. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, like I said, I'm, I, I put out these episodes again, if this is your first time watching this uh, or hearing it, whatever. Uh, I put these out once every two weeks or so just to kind of, you know, keep people updated. Um, so I bet by Maybe by the episode after, I don't know. Soon I'll fill you in on like everything that like happened. It's, it's not like a big deal, it's not like, huge. Anyway, um, I'm also taking this time to like really reflect on like my career and like where I want it to go. Like, like where do you want your, how do you want your career to play out over the next five years? Cause obviously if I take one of these jobs, maybe I'll spend two to three years there. Maybe I'll spend a lot longer there if I really like it, like who knows? So it's kind of like, how do I want to play out, you know, this next five years? Because I'm also thinking about like my exit from this, not to like alarm people, right? Like I'm not going to make YouTube videos forever, right? I'm not going to be 80 years old doing Swift tutorials, right? So at some point there has to be an exit. And, you know, I also like believe in like chapters in life. Like that's kind of how my life has played out. Very different chapters every five to 10 years. And I don't know, like I, I kind of like that. So I'm already like you know, thinking about like what's next. Um, so again, I don't, don't want to alarm you. We're still years and years away from that, but I don't want my exit from YouTube to come like abruptly. I want it to be planned out. And then also like, okay, how can I spend the next three to five years, whatever, like preparing myself for that next chapter. So by assessing these companies, assessing a potential move, uh, again, it's really had me kind of like taking a step back and kind of like thinking about like the next uh, five to 10 years. But anyway, that wraps up the whole like, am I getting a job section? I know that was kind of vague and you're probably interested in like what companies I'm talking to, how it's going. I will fill you in of course, but again, I'm in the process. So I don't wanna like reveal anything quite yet. Uh, so let's shift to the content creation business. And I haven't been putting out a lot of videos uh, for two reasons. One, I put out that tweet and then my DMs, you know, kind of blew up more than I, I'm not going to act like, oh, I can't believe anybody reached out. Like I knew some people would reach out, but it was a lot more uh, than I expected. So kind of like filtering out the DMs, you know, kind of like making a list of, of what companies I was going to talk to, which ones I wasn't, and then lining up phone calls and actually having those phone calls. Like it's like a full-time job. So that's why you haven't seen many videos uh, the past week or so. But the other reason uh, is Clubhouse. <laughs> Clubhouse kind of like dominated my life for a few days there. Uh, and I want to talk about that a little bit because I think it's a great opportunity uh, for developers out there. But first of all, let me tell you about my little like love-hate relationship with uh, Clubhouse. Hate's a strong word, I shouldn't have said that. But uh, so I was immediately like obsessed with it. It's like, oh, this is so cool. But it quickly lost its novelty. And I think at least for my taste, again, everybody's taste is different. But for my taste, I think I like the rooms that have like a focused structure and kind of like a point to them, if that makes sense. A lot of the early iOS developer rooms and not just iOS developer, this is like spans across all my interests that I've been in rooms. It was just people kind of in there just hanging out, shooting the shit, you know, no real direction to the conversation. Sometimes a lot of interesting stuff got discussed, but it was almost like serendipitous. Like it had to have like, oh crap, okay, we stumbled onto something interesting. Uh, whereas a lot of times it was just not that interesting to be completely honest. Um, don't get me wrong, it's great to pop in, hang out, shoot the shit for a little bit, but that novelty again is what wore off. Um, however, the more focused rooms with a purpose that are very structured, I find those really, really fascinating. I think that's uh, that's great. It's also been cool 
to just get a chance to talk to people. You know, I recognize a ton of Twitter avatars in there, names from the comment section. You know, I've like read your words, but I've never had a conversation with you or heard, you know, your thoughts on something. You expound on, on something, a topic, whatever, in Clubhouse. So it's a great opportunity for developers to kind of hop on stage, give their thoughts, give their opinions, uh, or like help out people, you know, in the community. And it's helped me just, again, learn a ton about people that I only kind of recognized from Twitter, right? So I think it's great for that. So if you've heard me talk about Twitter being an awesome networking tool, I think Clubhouse takes that to a whole nother level. Because it's one thing to tweet 200 characters at someone. It's another thing to have a conversation with them in Clubhouse. So if you're not on the Clubhouse train yet, I understand that it's an invite stuff. You know, that's a conversation for a whole nother time. But uh, do what you can to get on there. I think it's a great opportunity to start building that network uh, for developers similar to how I recommend Twitter. So that's why you haven't seen a lot of videos uh, on the business side of things. You know, courses have continued to sell at a pretty good pace. Again, as about what I had hoped for uh, when I talked about my, my plan for 2021. I wanna give an update on the next course I wanna build. Cause if you listen to last episode, I talked about a course all about MapKit. Well, I've explored that, I've researched it, I've started brainstorming that. And I think I'm gonna move away from that. Uh, and the big reason is, you know, MapKit touches a lot of things. It, it, there's a lot of different things you can do in MapKit. So, in order for me to make a course, I would have had to have probably made like a couple different smaller independent apps. And those felt more like YouTube videos to me than like a course, right? I like my courses to, you know, build, you know, a sizable app, I guess, right, in, in the course. So I think I'm shifting away from a, here's everything about MapKit course and build like a realistic app that incorporates MapKit. So what I'm thinking is building like a small app called like WWDC Eats. And I have to research this, this seems like, Somebody may have already built this. I hope not. This was literally an idea I had. So if it is already out there, I haven't looked yet. I'm going to look before I make the course. Um, but uh, an app called WWDC Eats, where it's, again, in the San Jose area around the convention center, it just pulls up a bunch of like restaurants, bars, whatever, like, uh, you know, for people to congregate while you're at the conference. And, you know, so that's where the map kit uh, comes into play, obviously. And then the other aspect of it, which may involve CloudKit core data, I'm not 100% sure yet, is like, you know, you can check in to certain restaurants, right? So like Sean Allen is here at this restaurant, you know, optionally, of course, I'm not going to track your location and broadcast it out to everybody unknowingly, but you have the option to check in to say, hey, everybody at WWDC, I'm at this restaurant at this time, right? And then, you know, people can go. So you could like see the list of restaurants, see what developers have checked in there, and you can like plan your dinner accordingly, right? That's kind of like the broad idea for the app. Um, but again, I got to, it sounds like that might already have been done. Uh, I got to check on that. But um, yeah, so the idea is kind of build one holistic app because a lot of the feedback I've gotten on my courses is, this is why I didn't want to do the one-off videos like on MapKit, like I talked about, is a lot of people are used to those YouTube type videos, but they're, they don't get the experience of like building an entire app from start to finish, like one cohesive project. So I've gotten that feedback a lot on my courses and that's why I want to incorporate that into this course. So yeah, we'll be SwiftUI, MapKit, maybe CloudKit Core Data. I got to figure that out. But by doing that though, I, I definitely want to make sure it's not going to be a, you're going to know everything about MapKit. You're going to know everything about CloudKit. You're going to know everything about Core Data, right? We're probably only going to do like introductory stuff on all of those areas and go deep enough just to build our product. So that's the rough plan for the course. I plan on building that app in the next couple of weeks, filming uh, all of March, and then hopefully a release early April. So what that really means is probably a release in late April, early May, if I know myself. Um, but just so you know, like where my head's at. No, I'm not promising any dates. Um, that's what I'm thinking about. That's where I'm at with that. Uh, again, I would love feedback. Uh, before I couldn't get feedback on the podcast because you can't leave comments. Now that this is a YouTube video, and this is another big reason why I'm experimenting with making this a YouTube video as well as the podcast, uh, is because now I can get feedback in the comments. So if that sounds like an interesting app, or maybe you know that it's already been built, it very well could have, it sounds like a common thing, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, or if you have ideas on how like that could be improved, keep in mind that the course has to be like a reasonable size, right? 40 to 50 videos. I'm not trying to make a hundred video long course, right? Cause one, that would be way too expensive for you all to buy, way too much work for me to do. It's just too much. So keep that in mind when you give feature ideas that I have to keep this into a compact package, you know, so to speak for the entire app. Okay, that wraps up content creation. Let's move on to the second C, uh, consulting. And again, just to, I'll catch people up a little bit because you know I, this may be the first time people are hearing this show uh, on the YouTube. Uh, I had two consulting projects, the grocery app and Aluna, uh, the startup I used to work for. The grocery app was done as of last week. So like I'm completely done with that. No longer going to meetings. That's kind of done. I'm, if they need to reach out to me, they can reach out to me. I'm not like, <laughs> not, I'm not gonna not answer the phone call. Uh, but now that just leaves Aluna as my consulting project. I'm doing that kind of like 
a, a couple hours a week. And my main focus is hiring an iOS developer, which I've spoken about uh, previous weeks. We're now working with a full-time recruiting firm. So hopefully that speeds up. I'll be done with Aluna when a senior iOS developer is in place and then, you know, I'll probably spend a month with them or so, like working on the turnover. Um, once that's done, then like my time with Luna will be done. But again, it's, it's only a couple hours a week. It's not like a huge uh, commitment. But what I'm working on now specifically with Luna is um, they're doing a bit of a redesign. They're not redesigning every screen, but a good handful of screens and some flows. So Chris and I are taking this opportunity to, by the way, Chris is the developer that kind of took over my spot at Luna, who I've, that's why I've stayed on for consulting to kind of like mentor him and help him out where needed. Uh, but so... The main thing we're working on is this redesign, a bunch of screens. So we're gonna go through like screen by screen and think about when we can implement Swift UI, right? It, is this a, a reasonable screen to try Swift UI on, right? And there's gonna be definitely gonna be a handful of them. And of course, you know, Chris is new to Swift UI. Everybody's relatively new to Swift UI, right? So we're gonna kind of like work together and brainstorm which screens are gonna be Swift UI, which are gonna stay UI kit, and then when they are Swift UI, like okay, what's the the proper way to to build this, uh, etc. So. That's Aluna, that's consulting. Again, pretty quick, I only do a couple hours a week. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, why, why, why don't I go to Aluna? I'm looking for a job, right? Because uh, I know many people may have thought that. They're looking for a senior iOS developer, I'm looking for a job, I've already been there. Like, Aluna's great, uh, it's not that I, I don't think it's a great opportunity, it's just, like I said before, I am looking for that large team, app at scale, millions of users, right? I've, again, the early stage startup, I've been there, done that. Like, I've, I feel very confident in that area. I want that big team, big app with millions of users. So that's that's why, if you're, if you're wondering. So to wrap this up with uh, Creator View, uh, I think it might go without saying, I haven't done anything on Creator View. So if I do end up getting a job, Creator View takes a giant, giant backseat. So that's kind of in limbo. You know, I'll probably still like tinker around on it just like when I'm bored. Um, however, if I don't end up getting a job, uh, you'll see me kind of go pretty hard on that. I know, I know I've been talking about this for like a year and a half and you haven't seen anything. So I feel like I'm all talk. I get it. You can call bullshit. It's fine. But uh, what I do think I need to change, like regardless, regardless if I get a job or, or don't, uh, I think I'm going to get an office at WeWork. Because this whole lifestyle of just like waking up, staying in my hoodie and sweats, uh, sitting on my couch working, like that's not working anymore. You know, it worked for a little bit. Now it's just, I feel like a bum all the time. I lack motivation. So Again, if I get a remote job somewhere, I'll still get the office at WeWork. And if I don't, I'll still get the office at WeWork. Um, it's probably like four or 500 bucks a month. But again, for the productivity I'll get, it's gonna be so, so worth it. Because if I'm being honest, productivity is damn near zero. <laughs> like it is very, very low. So that's why I think I need to change uh, to kind of like, you know, reinvigorate myself a little bit. So that wraps up this episode. Again, this is the first experimental YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, I would love to hear the comments. Um, if this was even interesting, if it's boring, like should I just keep this as the podcast or do you like kind of like the video aspect of it as well? The reason I kind of like the video aspect of it a little bit is I can edit it, right? I can throw up stuff on the screen to like illustrate what I'm talking about. Because before when I talked about creator view, like I would describe the screen, but now that it's a video, like I can actually like put the screenshot up. So. That's the main, so the main reason I want to experiment with video is being able to put up visuals uh, and being able to get feedback like in the comment section. Uh, so again, I know many people may not care about content creation business or what an indie app dev does on like the business side of things. That's what this show is all about. So, hey, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Um, so don't like... I guess don't leave that comment. Don't, don't leave like, I, I'm not interested. Like I know most people aren't gonna be interested in this. They wanna come to my channel to learn how to code something, right? They don't really care about my business. So I get that there's gonna be a large percentage of people like that. Um, but yeah, I would just, just love to hear your feedback in general. Uh, if I get bashed, I'll probably do a couple more episodes and then send it back to just podcast only. But hey, we'll give it a try. All right, I'm rambling now. So uh, I'll wrap it up. We'll see you in the next one.